So let's get started on the meatballs. Now, I have in this bowl about a pound and a half-ish of some, just some very lean. This is actually ground sirloin. Wouldn't go any leaner than that, but my store was out of the ground chuck, which is what I prefer, but we use what we have. To that, we're going to add some fresh chopped parsley, a lot of it, because the parsley adds some good flavor as well as color. So we chop our parsley. I'm just using my um, board that I can throw into the dishwasher because I'm going to actually get that meat out here in just a minute. And I don't want to use my wooden board for that. Chop it up. Not too, too fine. This is one of those herbs that I, you got to have fresh. I mean, if you don't have fresh parsley, leave it out. Don't substitute it with dried. Dried parsley has no flavor. Whereas fresh flat leaf Italian parsley is full of flavor, and I love it. We're going to make a panade, which is a bread-type product that adds moisture as well as flavor and a little bit of fat to the ground beef mixture. I have in this bowl about a fourth to a third of a cup of half and half, but you could use milk, you could use heavy cream. I just have half and half. To that, I'm going to add some panko breadcrumbs, and I want to stir that together, and I want to let the panko sit in the milk mixture for just a minute to kind of absorb all of those flavors, so we're going to leave that alone for a minute. I'm going to add my parsley. That's probably, I don't know, half a cup or so of dried, par not dried parsley, fresh chopped Italian parsley. To that, we're going to add some Italian seasoning, some onion powder, some salt, some pepper, and some garlic powder. Now, the reason I'm not using the Fresh onion and garlic is, I have a child at home that likes the flavor of onions but doesn't like the chunks, so I, I substitute onion powder for him. But, I, and the reason I don't want to use the fresh garlic in here, you can if you want, is um, it's just for ease of what I have on hand. I don't always have fresh garlic, but I always have fresh or garlic powder. I have one egg that will act as a binder just want to beat it just a little bit before I add it. Then I have here some grated Parmesan cheese. I'm going to add probably, you know, this is to taste. I'm going to add maybe half a cup of that cheese and save that for the top. Then I'm going to add my panade. Now, you see how that milk has sort of absorbed into the panko breadcrumbs? If you don't have panko breadcrumbs, you could make your own uh, breadcrumbs with fresh bread or use just breadcrumbs, whatever you have. You could even use crackers if you want to use like saltines or something, whatever you want here. Now, I'm going to, let me just, actually, I think this time I'm going to put on some gloves. I don't always do that, but I am today because I don't want to turn my back on you to go wash my hands. Now, I'm going to just mix up this meat with my hands because truly I think they're the best tools you have for this process. You want to get all of those ingredients incorporated together. And let me just tell you, this mixture would make a great meatloaf. That's not what we're doing today, but it would make a great meatloaf. Now, if you wanted to, you could, after you get it all mixed up, and what I do sometimes is I use a scoop, an ice cream scoop. I have several different sizes. I don't like my meatballs to be too big. So I'm, I use a smaller scoop. And you can scoop it out just like this and then roll it into balls if you want to. I don't want to. That takes a while. And, you know, I just don't feel like doing that today. So what I'm going to do is show you a shortcut. So take your meat mixture and put it on a board that 
you can wash and sanitize. And I'm gonna pat it out into a rectangle or a square. All right, just pat it out about, I don't know, an inch thick or so. Make a square or a rectangle. And I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do, and maybe you can guess. There's no rule that says meatballs have to be round. This is easier. Take a knife and cut it into squares. You've got flat meatballs, because let's be honest, when you're browning them in the skillet, they flatten out anyway. So we're just going to cut these into uh, portion sizes, however you want to do them. Some I may go back in and cut a little bit smaller, like these end pieces, because I don't want them too big. How easy is that? Now, what I'm going to do is turn on a nonstick skillet to, uh, you know, medium high. I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil. Now, I have here a pot of water that I have brought to a boil. And when I pop these in the oven to finish baking, I will put the pasta in the water. So let's bring this over here. And we will use our handy dandy little scoop. And we're just going to brown these squared meatballs. Now, if you want to make them into balls, you go right ahead. And I do that all the time at home. I love meatballs. It's one of my favorites. But I do not like dry hockey puck meatballs. I want them to be a little bit looser, extremely flavorful. And this way, you just have to turn them once instead of standing over them and turning them and doing all that. I'm going to do about half of these. I'm just going to brown them on one side and then flip them over and brown them on the other side, both batches. When I come back, I'm going to show you how to finish up the meatballs, how to get them ready to go into the oven, and we'll get started on our dessert. I'm going to clean up, and I'll be back in just a minute. Now, I want to show you what I'm doing. I, I did put my pan on a baking sheet because I don't want to have spillovers potentially in my oven. I just poured one jar of your favorite marinara sauce, whatever kind of spaghetti sauce you like. And as I browned the meatballs, or meat squares, I guess I should say, I just have nestled them down in that sauce. They are not cooked through. They're going to finish in the oven. So we're just putting them in the sauce. And the rest of the juices from the meatballs are going to come out and, you know, get into that sauce and make it even better. Nestle them in there however you need to to get them all in there because you don't want to waste not one drop of this meat flavor. Oh, it's so good. I love meatballs. It's one of my favorite things to eat. Then, 
On top of this, we're going to pour another jar. Now, I know that seems like a lot of sauce, but remember, we're going to serve this over pasta, whatever shape you like. I'm just do mine over spaghetti because that's what I like. My favorite jarred pasta sauce is this brand. It's the Rayos. I like just the regular tomato basil. It is so good. If you've never tried it, catch it on sale. And, oh, it is delicious. Now, we want to make sure that all of our meatballs are covered. And I'm going to top it with, remember the rest of that Parmesan cheese that we had? I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit over it. And then I'm using one block of fresh mozzarella. This is not the shredded. If you don't have this, you could use shredded mozzarella. I don't think it tastes as good as this. I use mozzarella a lot. But this fresh and this already sliced is delicious. It is such a wonderful flavor and it gives you that gooey, stringy, you know, when you pull it apart, you get that string. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> My mouth is watering ready to eat this. I love it. My family loves it. Makes great meatball sandwiches. If you don't want to serve it over um, pasta, you could serve it as a meatball sandwich or on its own. You don't even, this does not have to have pasta. Now, we've got the rest of that, that wonderful mozzarella and I'm going to top it with yet more of that Parmesan cheese because the Parmesan... What that will do is golden up. It'll get crispy and golden and mm, so good. I mean, this is, you know, this is a, a, a decadent meal. A once in a while, it's not a, a daily thing by any stretch of the imagination, because it's, but it's delicious. Then we're gonna pop this in a 350 degree oven. Oh, my goodness, that's heavy. For about 30 minutes. And in 30 minutes, we're going to have the most delicious, wonderful main dish. You could make that in a uh, dish to, to go, like the, the aluminum. I've got some over here that I do. Sometimes I'll make them in the pans that are disposable pans to take to someone. Maybe you know someone that, is sick or you just want to take a meal, they will be happy to get that, I promise you. Now, let's get started on a dessert. Clean up my board just a little bit here. I love strawberries, that's no surprise to anybody. I love strawberries. And strawberry shortcake is one of my favorite desserts. But I don't always have time to make the homemade shortcakes. I find just a purchased pound cake makes a delicious strawberry shortcake trifle, which is what we're going to make today. I'm going to use my pretty little trifle dish, but if you don't have one of these, uh, you, you, I mean, you can put it in any kind of bowl. I, just, I do like the trifle because it shows how pretty the, you know, the layers are. This is just a purchased pound cake, and then what I'm going to do is cut it into slices first. If you want to make homemade, go for it. I love pound cake. It's actually my favorite cake. I've shared this story before, but my sister, when she, where she used to live, there was a uh, lady that lived next door to her, Miss Jones. We called her Jonesy. She made the best pound cake I have ever eaten in my life. I have her recipe. It's in one of my cookbooks. I don't remember which one. She was very particular. You had to stir, stir it in one direction only. You couldn't go back and forth by hand. And you had to use Dixie Crystal's sugar. That's what she said. And I'm telling you, that was the best pound cake ever. She's been gone for years and years now. But, oh, my goodness, Jonesy's pound cake is divine. My sister sometimes used to make that for me for my birthday because it is my favorite cake. Love it. Mm. So, in my dish, 
I'm going to put just a few little cubes. I've got another pound cake over there. I'm probably going to need it because these were the little short ones. Just put you some. And then we need some strawberries, which I did not get a spoon for. So let's... These are beautiful strawberries that we just cut up into bite-sized pieces. You um, can make them slices if you want, up to you. I mean, this is one of those that's simple and easy. It, it's not a complicated dessert, which is what I like. And then I'm going to use just this. You could use Cool Whip if you want. And then layer on some more pound cake. Probably need to cut up that other one because I want lots and lots of the beautiful cake cubes. Then more strawberries. You could use raspberries. You could use blueberries, blackberries. A mixture would be delicious. You do what you like. And then more of this. You could make your own homemade whipped cream if you want. Up to you. And then I think that's probably good. Then, of course, the rest of my strawberries. I'm going to save just a few to go on the very tippy top. Well, no, what I'll do. I mean, you decorate it however you want. I'm just going to make pretty little rosettes on top. Underneath it doesn't matter as much, but here you want it to be decorative and pretty. However you want to do it. Oh, doesn't that look good? Let's let the strawberries show. So let's just put one right in the middle. Now... This just needs to chill in the refrigerator. If you wanted to add some uh, pudding to this mixture, you totally could. You could make, you know, a vanilla pudding or a white chocolate pudding would be delicious in this. Chocolate pudding would be delicious in this. Whatever kind of pudding you like would be yummy. And just put that where you put the whipped cream in the bottom and then top it with your whipped cream. So I'm going to pop this in the fridge. Check my spaghetti noodles that are cooking. Get cleaned up. When I come back, we're going to make just a quick little dressing for salad and some bread. I'll be back in just a minute. Now, our wonderful meatballs are smelling fabulous. Oh, I, I wish that somebody would invent that smell-o-vision thing, but it's almost ready. My pasta is cooked, and if here's a little hint for you. If you cook your pasta ahead of time, and in this case, I'm using spaghetti noodles, but you could use whatever kind you like. Um, if you will drain it and then coat it with a little bit of butter, it keeps the strands separate, ready to for when you're ready. Now, I just have a loaf of Italian bread that I've sliced, and I'm just going to butter my slices. The flavors in the meatball dish are so delicious and good and, you know, so just full of different flavors. I don't want a complicated, like a garlic bread or anything like that with it. If you do want that, you feel free to add some garlic to this or whatever you like. I just want plain, warmed up, buttered bread. That's what I prefer with this. But you do what you like. And to go alongside this, I would just serve just a green salad. Again, no big flavors in there because you don't want anything to compete 
with the pasta or the meatball dish that we're going to be serving. The meatballs most definitely could be served on their own. You do not have to have the pasta if you're eating keto um, or low carb. You know, leave the pasta out if you want to. Um, I do eat low carb most of the time. However, that's one of my most favorite things in the world to eat. And I just don't want to not ever have pasta again. So I allow myself to have this every so often because I love it that much. Now, all I'm going to do is put this in the oven with the um, meatballs and just let that kind of warm through. They're pretty much done. Uh, just maybe three or four more minutes. To go alongside this, I would just serve a green salad. I like just a mixed green. Um, this is just a spring mix. You can use whatever you like. And again, I don't want that competing flavors. So I'm just going to dress mine simply with a little bit of olive oil, extra virgin, and some red wine vinegar. You don't need, you know, anything any more than that. I remember so often my husband, Mike, his grandmother, Grandma Roberts, she always would just use Oil and vinegar. That's what she used as her salad dressing. And I am a person who doesn't like the, the ranches and the Thousand Islands and all that. I prefer Italian or vinaigrette type dressings. So this is perfect for me. But you do what you like. So that's what I would serve as my salad. I would not do anything more than that. Maybe add a cucumber if you want to. But it's not necessary. Now, to serve this, I would just take a little bit of your pasta of choice. I'm serving it with spaghetti, but any sauce, you know, penne would be great, rigatoni would be great, um, uh, any, you know, the um, tagliatelle, any kind of a, 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 any shape, the bow tie, uh, farfalle would be delicious with this. Any kind of pasta would be fine with this. Here is our delicious meatball bake that I just took out of the oven. That is boiling hot. So please, please be careful with this. Remember that pan is hot. This would be a great dish to take to someone. Um, you could make it in one of the disposable pans. I, I did have some over here, but I, I don't know where they are. Somewhere down in here, some. But you know what I'm talking about. You can get them at the Dollar Tree. You can get them at Walmart, grocery stores, Amazon. They sell them everywhere. This would be a great dish to take to someone. Now, I would just go in with your delicious little spoon. If I can do this without burning myself. That's too big. Let me... Try something a little bit smaller. Let's do this one. The great thing about the cheese is, okay, are you watching? You see that gooiness? That's what you want. Yum, look at that stretchy cheese, yum. I can remember when I was a little girl, I was born in Baltimore, and Daddy would always take us to the, the local farmers, one of the farmers markets up there. And I can remember getting pizza and lifting up a piece of that pizza and that cheese just going everywhere. 
And there you go. I would serve that with just the, a little bit of the sauce. You've got plenty down in there, as much or as little as you like. You could, if you wanted to, put your halfway cooked spaghetti in the bottom of your pan and then proceed on with this recipe if you wanted to make it a one pan dish. You totally could do that. Again, I like my bread just warmed through the, um, the butter. That's plenty enough bread. The butter just melted on there. You could broil it if you wanted to make it a little toastier, however you wanted to do it. And then here is our delicious dessert. So there you go. There is an, a meal. You know, you could totally just serve this any day of the week. This comes together from start to finish in under an hour. So you could make this for dinner any night of the week. Make it ahead if you wanted to. You could make the meatballs just like we did and then leave off the cheese. Put them in your crock pot in the morning and let them simmer during the day with the sauce and then top it with your cheese the last 20 minutes in the crock pot so the cheese could melt. You could totally do that. You could make it uh, in again in an oven. You could make this into a freezer meal. If you're feeding a smaller family, you know, maybe divide it in half and put it into two different containers. Freeze one for another day. If you're taking the time to make all of it, make more than what you think you're going to need and freeze half. And then on another day when maybe you don't have time to cook, take it out, pop it in your oven, let it thaw if you need to overnight, and then put it in your oven and you've got a, a meal ready to go. That's a great type of dish to make ahead for a freezer meal. Everything in there would freeze beautifully. I wouldn't add the pasta to it. I would make that fresh, but delicious and easy. So from start to finish, one of my personal favorite things to eat, I mean, 